So as I say, the topic is so how to sow the seeds that create sales opportunities. I've given the introduction there. So uh, just to summarize, uh, this is how we generate interest. So along the awareness, interest, desire, action, this is the interest phase. And the objective of this segment, this interest phase, is to set up a qualification phone call. It is not to outline what you do and your products and services. And in fact, if you did that, you would probably derail the purpose here, the objective. So there are four stages to this. The first one is to emphasize to your to the other party, the prospect, the burning platform, as it were, that where they are is an uncomfortable place to be. They may not know that yet, and so it has to be done with finesse. The second is to paint a picture of a better future for them. The third is to build your credibility, your empathy, the reliability they feel and the trust they feel in you. And the fourth is to justify an action, typically to take a call or set up a call with you, with you in the role of a trusted advisor. Now this, this sequence has uh, been on my radar for quite some time and I've, I've revisited it. Um, first came through from a guy called Topher Morrison, who I met probably seven or eight years ago. And he uh, knitted it down, if my memory serves me correctly, to uh, pain in the present. So this is the burning platform. The hope for a brighter future, the painting a picture of the future. The faith or confidence in you as an individual. And a clear pathway forward. So that's what I've uh, mirrored on those four, and I, I emphasize those to get the, to make the point. And then to put in place some way of making it easy for them to book a call with you. So that's the sequence. Now, in order to provide an illustration of this, rather than talking theory, let's illustrate this with an example. Let's make this personal. So, the likelihood is that if you're watching this, you are an ambitious senior professional. You know your technical area, whether you're a, an accountant, a solicitor, an IT technician, a management consultant or whatever, you know your technical subject. You're good at client service. Once you're in front of a client, you're good at the process of moving a project through. Um, you recognize the importance of bringing in clients. And that's a, a, a significant sort of almost assumption I'm making here that yes, you could be a good senior professional with other people bringing the work to you, but the underlying aspect of Rainmaker is that you're now moving into a point where you're bringing in uh, or learning the skills to bring in clients yourself. Um, and given various circumstances, you may well have concerns about your current situation, your future career, your options and so on, and that you are considering investing in yourself to become better at gaining clients. So that's my sort of um, description of the persona that I am targeting for the, the Rainmaker program. You no doubt will have your own view of a persona for, for your target audience. So let's move through this then in terms of the, the burning platform aspect. So here are some news headlines that I picked out in preparing for this presentation. So. It, 2020, uh, July, the headline here came through, admittedly from America, CNBC. In terms of the impact of Corona, the professional and business services is the third largest sector that they anticipate will be hit with redundancies and layoffs and so on. Um, just to make the impact there, this, this is, uh, this virus, this lockdown and impact is affecting all, all sectors. Moving across into the UK, this article from uh, McKinsey in May um, identified in terms of job losses, professional and scientific, they're about number 10, anticipating losing 13% 
of jobs in that sector. So you look around your, your colleagues and so on, you know, was that one in seven uh, is, is you know, potentially at, at risk? And if that one in seven is yourself, that's a vulnerable position to be in. Um, looking at Financial Times from a couple of days ago, Accenture to cut 900 UK jobs as the pandemic hits. And they're seeing a decline in work in various areas. Partners have taken pay cuts. Um, this, this really is hitting the top end of the marketplace. And uh, no doubt we'll, we'll also, you know, these are the headline news, news that will make the, the national press. There's no doubt a lot of trickle down and, and local news that doesn't uh, get quite the visibility. Another one here, Deloitte in Australia cutting jobs, but that's um, uh, you know, what's happening in other parts of the world is a reflection of what's probably going to happen in, in your geography. So what is the impact of coronavirus and lockdown? At the international level, major companies are cutting back. Locally, it's indicating a reduction of demand in the market for professional services. The economy is shrinking. And that is having a like to have a trickle down effect to smaller firms and also to independent and self-employed so if there's less work to go around we need to make sure that we're in, in there doing the best we can to get work for ourselves and for our teams and, and for our businesses depending on our, our level of responsibility and we're only three months in at this stage so uh, Maybe this is the dip and then there's a, a massive recovery, but maybe there's another scenario here. So around all of that, how are you feeling? Um, I've, I've been through three recessions myself. So in the 1990s, I was working for IBM and uh, they did a restructuring and, and, and shut, uh, they issued a, a voluntary redundancy program. And I decided at that stage that it was worth moving on from that uh, corporate environment. Um, in the 2000s, um, I was caught up with the 9-11 um, um, terrorist attack on the World Trade Center and the impact that that had on the economy. And the technology company that I was working for at the time lost about 30, 40% of its workforce. The fee earners stayed, but those on the business development side uh, moved on. And then in 2007, 2008, we had the financial crisis. And again, I was in a, a situation where the company I was working for downsized considerably um, around that. So there is, I've been through that sense of feeling a bit like a rabbit in the headlights. You know, you know things are happening, you're focusing on the day job, but uh, you know, unable to see because of these headlights, what's going on around you. And sometimes it's useful to just look around and see. So what are the response options? What can we do? Uh, we can uh, wait for the rebound. We can wait for clients to emerge and inquiries to come through. We can wait for other people in the business to bring new clients in. But that means we've not really got a huge amount of control over our own destiny. The next is to say, okay, we could you know, rather desperately chase around for what's in the public domain. You know, if unfortunately we're made redundant, then chasing around for jobs that exist in the marketplace that everybody else is chasing for. If we're still in work, then we need to get more business in. Then we may be chasing around any, anything that's, that's uh, out there where people are looking for new suppliers. And unfortunately, there's a, there's a race to the bottom on price in a lot of those cases. The next is to create opportunities by identifying unmet needs and wants with people that we uh, know, like and trust and who know, like and trust us. Um, and also we can be using our knowledge to take fresh ideas and opportunities to people who trust us. And that really is getting into this, this rainmaker territory where we have an opportunity potentially to take control. Um, so looking out for what's our income going to be over the next, uh, you know, short term and also maybe over the next 20 or more years. What is our job security? Are we dependent upon having the one job or can we create a situation where we have other options? And how are we going to support our family, our nearest and dearest, these sort of concerns that come through and also then all, an impact around the relation between job, employment and mental and physical health ties in there as well. So I don't know if any of you have touched 
uh, have experienced any of those I've, I've certainly had that uh, that feeling of you know concern over income in the short term and and uh, longer term over those three uh, recession periods particularly and what i've done is to develop uh, a way that gives me that income security that allows me to support my family and allows me to ride out some of the mental and the physical issues that uh, i've also experienced so a question then is what steps could you take and that's really where I'm positioning some options for you. So the first of which is to look at repositioning yourself, moving beyond the straight CV of what have you historically done, but look long and hard at what you'd like to do in the future and make sure that that's aligned with your personal strengths, your characteristics, your ambition, and so on. Get clarity around your strengths. What is your value? Who are your ideal clients and their pain? Particularly if you're running your own business, understanding who your ideal clients are and their pain is really key at this stage and then be able to communicate that clearly and succinctly and i suggest that starting with your linkedin profile is an ideal place for that so it's a good um very visible platform um, message in the in the b2b marketplace so there's people like uh, dr janet rose who um has been through that process there and I helped her to clarify her position for herself and her business in the in the teaching and um, teaching area and uh, you know, that's given her a much stronger position to move forward with the second area beyond the repositioning is to really understand how to use the LinkedIn platform so whether you're um, whether it's something that you uh, use very passively you've just got a profile but in the not just in the jobs market but in the, the self-promotion the personal branding the raising awareness the the building a network getting in touch with people who people who you already know develop the online liking and trusting side of things as well so how would you do that you, you, um, you gain skills on how to use LinkedIn better and particularly in this context use that as a way of starting conversations with people this isn't necessarily have I got a job you know have you got a job for me or have you got a, a work some work for me be more subtle than that finesse it and just network around how can you help other people what can you offer to other people um, do the research to see what other people need ask the questions and follow up so offering help offering service asking some key questions those are good ways to, to move forward so with one of the clients I worked with a few months ago, we went through exactly the same process, sharpened up his LinkedIn profile, did some training and work around what his conversations were going to be. And uh, he's, he's enjoying the results of that already. And the, the next level up um, is how to move into that area where you can really start to create opportunities. You're sowing the seeds and moving those through. So, yeah, looking around your professional circle, are there people there who you admire, who have the ability to bring in new, new clients? People in the firm you're working with, people you've worked with in the past. You know, what, is it, what was it about them that they, uh, that they were able to uh, apply um, that brought people into the you know, clients into the business? And the question there, would you like to develop that ability yourself? The ability to gain new clients to, to have the control over um, income fees and so on income for yourself fees for other people for other people in your team particularly if you are a, a team leader a partner in a business running your own business your ability to reliably bring in new clients is what will keep that team together so people like john dalgano who uh, i've known for 10 or more years maybe 20 years even has been applying those skills uh developing work particularly now for his son in the video uh, area so we've had a long dialogue there around uh, use of linkedin and some of the things that are going on here and he's a great supporter of this rainmaker program so a uh, number of different examples there where the three stages there getting your positioning sorted out understanding how to use linkedin and then developing the skills to uh, start conversations and move those through to, to um, client engagement 
If you'd like to have um, a little bit more information about that, let's up, set up an initial chat to explore the options that are relevant for yourself. And that sort of conversation, just to give you a heads up on that, it's, 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 I have this with, with lots of people, it's um, so I can understand where you are at the moment, uh, where you'd like to get to, and then yeah, explore the thoughts on how you'd like to get there, how you see going forward. I'll, uh, I'll listen, and actually just you talking to somebody who's actively listening can be beneficial. I'll ask some questions to stretch your, your thoughts, and I'll suggest some options there to uh, look outside the, uh, outside the box, as it were. And again, I do that on a regular basis. It seems to be part of my DNA to listen, ask questions and suggest options just to give people a different perspective of their situation. And many people find it incredibly valuable. So would you find that useful? Uh, would you like somebody who you could use as a sounding board? If so, then uh, book a call with me. Uh, you can use the, uh, the domain markstonland.com as a way of booking through. That links through to a diary booking page on my website. And if you need any more reassurance, there's about 80 plus testimonials on LinkedIn for people like Sharon Critchlow, whose uh, profile I did uh, a rework on, uh, one of the directors of Deloitte, Martin, uh, Michael, a solicitor in the Bristol area, did some training with him. Uh, Pradeep, who's over in India, who was running a business and has now become a senior director with an Oracle. Uh, with Mark Lorne, who's uh, been independent for many years and also now has got a, a chief of staff job in a big oil company, oil, oil services company. And on the company side, an example there of David Eldridge, who uh, I've worked with over many years on his, um, with him and his team. As I say, if you're interested in having that open conversation, um, no commitments on uh, that, that uh, needs to go anywhere further than just uh, a good conversation. And that is, in this context, a qualification call. Do you feel that I could bring, bring value to you? And do I feel that you would be a, somebody who I could bring value to? So that's a two ways or a 20 minute uh, conversation. So look at the uh, markstone.com and book a call with me if you think that would be useful. Uh, thank you very much indeed for your time. And this program is around developing rainmakers, helping ambitious senior professionals to win more clients and grow their firm or their business. Thank you.